Hello, this is Justin Milton, CEO of Chill IT. Um, this is uh, the third in the series about cyber security. So previously I've covered, uh, is my business a target? What are the risks to my business? So I'm gonna talk about uh, root causes of cyber incidents and then the final one uh, in the fourth series will be, what can I do? So in terms of uh, the root causes of cyber incidents, first of all, we'll do a little bit of a poll. Um, so if we go to the next slide, so the, so the question is, what percentage of cyber incidents are caused by reused, weak, or compromised passwords? So and this is from the Notified Data Breach Report, so um, from the Australian government. So is it 23%, 47%, 65%, or 91%? So just write that little number down. All right, so the answer to this is it's actually 65%. So 65% of cyber incidents are caused by reused, weak or compromised passwords. So that's you know basically two thirds. Um, and if you look at other data, it basically indicates that 85% of all breaches usually have some sort of human element, usually linked to, to credentials. Because at the end of the day, that's the credentials, usernames, passwords that enables to get them access to systems and accounts. Um, so that's why it's so high. So um, what that basically tells you is that now, if you haven't got your passwords right and you haven't got your security around that and your processes around that, then you're at, at real risk. So just to follow on from that, this is these are sort of the, um, the key um, cyber incidents that tend to occur. Now, just note this excludes um, deliberate um, acts or accidental acts by employees um, where they're trying to either whether accidentally delete data or uh, corrupt data or they um, steal data. Um, and also doesn't include act of God um, loss of data where there's a fire or flood, uh, etc. So this is purely for you know a directed cyber attack. Um, but from a resilience point of view, you need to consider those other things as well. So typically, um, uh, sixty percent um, comes from compromised credentials. Um, so thirty-two percent is from phishing, which where they've where they've been able to identify that the person's been phished. And phishing is really where someone acts like a trusted source. And convinces you to give over the details. So it's basically a con. You know, they, they con you to give away information that they can use. Uh, and then there's um, another 28%, which brings it up to 60% in total of the stolen credentials, um, where they've obviously been compromised, but they're not quite sure where they've got the information from. So they have been able to identify a specific phishing incident in their business where the information has been given over, but they've been able to get the, the information from some other source. And that potentially could be um, from social media or that wide digital footprint we all have in our business um, and personal lives where we you know, where potentially people are using the same password again and again. Um, so that's, that's the risk there. Ransomware is very substantial, almost one in four, so 23%. So ransomware is one you hear a lot about, so that's where uh, they get in there into your systems and they basically hijack your systems so you can't access your data and your information. Uh, they don't necessarily steal anything directly, but they basically hold you to ransom to make, give them a payout to get access to your data. So that's obviously um, quite a, a challenging and frustrating experience where, where that happens. Uh, direct hacking is only about 8%. Um, so that's where someone is you know, really just targeting you, trying to break into your systems using the power of computers um, and their knowledge of your business. So that's, while it's you know, obviously it's still significant, um, but it's um, but yeah, that's uh, sort of that's actually not the main one. When you look at that, the vast majority is basically because um, you know uh, it's due to phishing or uh, compromised credentials. Uh, brute force attacks and a brute force attack is typically. Um, a low sophistication attack where they basically, you know, go through and they go, they might decide to test every every one in your business for for password one, two, three, to see if anyone's putting password one, two, three. So they'll, what they do is they'll get the list of the, you know, the top, you know, thousand most common uh, passwords and they'll literally go through uh, the usernames of your business and those usernames, are, they can probably see when they add your domain name with your name from your website, from the people in your employees, they can tell who they are. So it's easy to get a large list of people they can go through. Um, and really, if they, if they do 100,000 people, if they, get, if they can get 100 people um, or 1,000 people, um, it's low cost uh, for them to do that. The last one's malware, where it's, yeah, some, that's some sort of virus. 
um, and there's 1% is, is other things. But 85% is from a human element. So I guess the key thing is that, you know, what that basically tells you is that you know, people are a big risk to your business because they're the ones who have the credentials. Um, and, it's not, and basically what, what's happened is the, the people are trying to log into your business um, because it's much harder to break in, as you can see by the 8% that's hacking. Um, it's much easier if they've got your information so they can log directly in and sit inside your system and, and collect data. Um, and as I said in the, in the previous ones, um, they can be inside your system for up to a year before people even realise someone's filtering and, and sifting through their information and collecting their information and selling it on the dark web or building up enough profiles so they can actually do a more targeted account attack on your accounts. Um, so talking about um, uh, people, uh, human behaviour. So the basic thing is a bad habits rule. All right. So um, yeah, everyone, and, and what's scary is that people know what's the right thing to do, but what they actually do is quite different. So to give you some examples, 79% of people um, say com compromised passwords are concerning. So they know that they, you know, they've got to be careful with their passwords. 92%, um, pretty much everyone knows using the same password is risky. Um, so everyone knows it's risky, largely. Uh, and you know, I guess if you're, if you're uh, employed in a business where you've been told, it should be pretty much close to 100%. Um, but still 51% rely on their memory for passwords, which is you know, huge. So that's 51% uh, just trying to remember what their, what their, what their password were, was. 83% um, don't know if their info was compromised. So the fact that they don't know is that if they're using the same dodgy password across multiple systems, they're just extending their, their risk profile. So if these are the people in your business who are using their, the same password they use for um, you know, Netflix at home, um, and they're using the, you know, and then for their LinkedIn profile, and then for their coffee club account, um, or whatever else they've got, um, then what happens is that, that that could be the same password they're using to get into your um, your system that, have, that holds all your data and all your information or accesses your account. So you need to be aware that could be the risk. Uh, and, and even more scarily, even when people have been advised of a breach, 45% still didn't change their password after the breach. So um, that's a little bit scary uh, in terms of what's going on there. From an Australian uh, point of view, 71% um, of Australians always or mostly use the same password variation. So what that means, you know, they, um, they may pick you know, their dog's name um, and you know, then it could be dog name, dog's name one, then dog's name two, then dog's name three, so it just progressively goes up or they might use dog's name um, NAB, dog's name ANZ, you know, et cetera. So they just just use the, the same variation um, within, within that so it becomes easier and easier to target where they're at. Uh, so I'll move to phishing now. So this is important because this issue around passwords and credentials comes down to phishing, right? So what all phishing is is where someone uh, from a credible source or a potentially credible source um, communicates uh, with you or one of your employees um, to basically try and get them to divulge information that they shouldn't, right? So that's what phishing is. So that ranges from brute force to target attack. So brute force is where they just send the general email to everyone. So they, you know, brute force example would be um, the Nigerian prince who's got, you know, $30 million that he needs to move out of the country. Um, can you please give him your bank account details, etc.? cetera? Um, so that's a brief false. Goes to lots of people, no sophistication, and they're just hoping for one or two weak links out of thousands, right? Um, where a target attack is where they use a little bit of social engineering, and I'll give you an example of that in a minute, where they um, look at the individuals or look at um, your business and try and put it in a context that makes it more likely that you will respond. Uh, and you've got to be clear, it's not just email. And as we're seeing now, we're seeing lots of SMS um, uh, phishing at the moment where people are sending SMSs. I don't know, everyone's probably got the, you have the package that's due to receive today because they want you to click on the link. There's video calls. Um, there's you know, people pretending to be the CEO. I think I gave the example previously where I'd only started with Chill IT and I'd only been on board a bit over a week and the, um, our financial person 
got an email from someone saying the CEO said, please make this payment of a couple of thousand dollars into this account, and it clearly wasn't me. Um, so the, they, they're able to scrape your websites, pick up um, titles, pick up names, and quite cleverly target people. So there's a range of ways they're doing it, and as technology changes, they'll find different ways. That, you know, that it's in social media, it's in calls, it's in SMS, it's in calls, it's in everything. Um, so you just need to be aware of that. Um, and I guess the other one is, um, is your person an email on the dark web? So I've given a, an address there you can go into, and if you put your personal email in there, um, you'll be able to see whether it's whether it's been compromised on the dark web. And if it is, change your password, because um, on the dark web there's all these massive lists. Um, so every company that's ever been compromised, you can pretty much go into any of those and, and find the password that any individual's used with that email address. And what, what all they do is they assume that if you if you've used, you know, you know, Billy Goat Gruff as your password, and you've used it in um, your LinkedIn um, account, uh, and LinkedIn is, is one of the ones that have been hacked, um, that uh, that you may have reused the same password on your Microsoft 365 account, or your bank account, or some other account. So remember that hackers are looking to log in, not break in. That's much easier if you, once you've got the credentials to, to get into your systems and then start doing all sorts of other interesting stuff. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, so this is an example. So um, you know, these are the signs that you're being fished. So I've got the little list down the right hand side, but this is an example that came um, through to me um, as an alert on my email. And what they actually did, and this is quite clever, right? So um, yeah, obviously um, we'll have to pick, pick it up that it wasn't a legitimate one. But the, the key thing is that they've, they've clearly taken our logo, um, they've used it, they've actually got my email address in their communication to look like it's a real communication, so that they're really looking for you to just put your password in. So they assume most businesses use their email address as their user, user ID, which is true in most, for a lot of businesses. Um, so they look at, they were looking for me to enter my password, and once they got once you put in, you, you get away you go. So um, they've said they've got the logo, they've got my email address, um, they've got obviously my name as part of that. Um, they've taken imagery off uh, one of our website pages as well. Um, so it looks quite convincing, and at a quick glance, it would be very easy for someone um, to go, oh, that looks like a legitimate message. Uh, and, to, and to, to respond. And you see these sort of messages getting more sophisticated. You see um, scams you know, regarding Australia Post, um, regarding each of the, any of the major banks. Um, you get uh, you know, ones from Telstra, um, uh, ones from Microsoft, Google. So there's all these scams that are out there. So you just need to be really paying attention. So typically what you, where the sort of the, the obvious ones is where the email is poorly written, uh, if it contains unsolicited attachments, so it's got things in there that you clearly haven't asked for um, or aren't uh, relevant to your business. If it requests sensitive information, so no one should be asking for sensitive information. There should be no, no email you open. You should be should you be um, going to a link where you, where you fill out your password. Simple as that. Um, what they try and do is have some sort of urgency involved. Um, so what they're trying to do is, you know, trying to make it, oh, you've got to act now, I've got to act now. So because... When people get rushed, they make poor decisions. That's psychology. So there's a lot of psychology in what they do. Um, if it sounds too good to be true, often there's, you know, there's these great offers, so you'd be aware of that. Um, often um, they don't address you by name, it's just a general email, and if the email clearly looks altered. The other things you need to look for is just things like, if you look at the link here, you can see that's clearly not a, a chill IT link. It looks a bit dodgy. Um, if Often if you hover your mouse over the email address, um, you can see what the email address is and it bears no resemblance to the, the name. So it's very easy to mask an email address. So what appears when it first pops up looks legitimate, but it's actually not the real email address. So you just need to be aware of that. And often what they can do is they can change a letter. Um, so they can make an I or an L, uh, the number one or a, uh, an O or a zero. So it looks like it's a legitimate um, email address. So you know, they spell Microsoft with a, with a zero in, as one of the O's. So it looks like it's a legitimate one, but it's not. So you just need to be be a little bit careful. All right, so that is um, the end of uh, part three. Um, thank you very much.